Oh, the wonderful world of logs. We've all been there, huddled over a computer for hours, staring at logs, googling them, trying to make sense of them. They all look the same, but slightly different. And then you realize, this isn't even the right log. Now, this log is good for many things, but troubleshooting networks is not one of them. But the good news is Libre NMS with grade log integration will keep your logs exactly where you expect them. So, in this video, we'll be installing Greylog on a Ubuntu 20.04 server. We're going to send device logs to Greylog. And then finally, we're going to integrate Greylog with LibreNMS so we can view the device logs from within the LibreNMS web GUI. Okay, so let's get started here, and we're just going to be installing Greylog here first, and we're going to follow the Ubuntu installation instructions on the website because it worked pretty well for me, and uh, I had no issues with it. Okay, so I would definitely install Greylog on its own separate machine and not share it with anything else. Uh, it's probably the best practice somewhere in here. Uh, so let's get started here installing the packages. I have a fresh Ubuntu installation over here, um, sort of. Uh, I've already done this once before, so I'm going to do it again. I never had any issues, so that's what I'm going to do it again. Uh, I'll probably be sudo for the whole thing for this, but let me just do that first. That will install uh, on yours. Mine already had it installed. So let me go to root. You can do sudo dash i to just go permanently root, uh, and then you don't need to do these sudo commands in front of here. Uh, it does, you can still do them, it doesn't hurt. MongoDB is going to be like kind of the first database we install in here, and I believe this is just for the configuration of Greylog. Uh, it doesn't have, it doesn't store any of the actual logs in here, it's just to store the configuration of Greylog, which is um, kind of interesting. But yeah, we just need to go through each one of these commands and do these. Okay, now we're going to get system D all working here. Okay, and this last command uh it's kind of interesting. I don't know why they uh why they made it such a crazy command you just do system they just want to make sure that uh, the mongodb database is actually running when you started this um so they you could just do this instead just status i know it says active running um yeah i don't know why whether like grepping it uh, i don't know uh, sometimes it's easier just just to do it look <laughs> i don't know that's me some some linux person made this and they were like i don't know they loved it so let's do uh, Elasticsearch next, and Elasticsearch is where all of the logs are going to be, or at least where you search for the logs. I'm not an expert of Elasticsearch at all, in the slightest bit. In fact, it's probably one of the least things I know out of all this stuff uh, is Elasticsearch. So um, yeah, I know enough to get it installed and get my logs into it, uh, but you usually manage all this through the gray log web GUI, so you don't really need to get too in-depth with Elasticsearch. Uh, so that's that's the good part of it. So we'll get all this installed here next. Okay, they want us to modify this uh, Elasticsearch config file here. I've already done this, but I believe I put it at the bottom. Yeah, cluster name, uh, gray log here. Um, or you could just do this command. This is actually what I did. Uh, you could do this command too, or you could just edit the file and type this in here, either or. Uh, both will work the same. You need to save that file. Uh, then we're going to be doing basically the same stuff, uh, getting system D working here for Elasticsearch. Restart, and again, they're just trying to make sure that the status of Elasticsearch is working. And active, so we'll see that as soon as this restarts. 
And then we'll be installing grade log. System status. Okay, so that's active and running, that's good. Um, and now we need to actually install grade log, the software. These, these last two were just the databases, kind of, for them. Well, one was. I don't know what you call Elasticsearch, to be honest with you. <laughs> Okay, so in here, uh, they're actually installing the enterprise plugins and some integration plugins uh, and this stuff. You, you don't necessarily need this. If you're going to be using the, the open source gray log version, these are, you have, these are paid for features. Um, so if you're, not, if you're not planning on using those, you really don't need any of that. You could probably just do uh, apt git install gray log server, uh, as it says down here. Okay. So we need to edit this gray log configuration file. All right. Okay, so they want you to create a hashed password for the root password. Um, so you can do it with this command here. So let me do this first. So basically, I'm going to put a password in here. I'm going to make it password, the worst password ever. And it's going to give me back a hash. And this is the value they want you to put in there for root password SHA2. So let me go and edit that file again. And I already did this at the bottom, but well, actually, I put it right here. So here it is right here. Is it the same? Probably the same because, uh, yeah. I already did this once before, so that's good. Uh, let's see here. They want the password secret too. And in order to do the password secret, uh, you should do this command. And I believe it's in the config file too. So let me just make sure of that. I think that's where I saw it. Uh, password secret. Yeah, right here. Uh, they want you to run this pwgen command uh, and that'll generate a password secret here. Uh, here we go. I believe that's just salting the password was just a random, random number. So I'm not going to change it because it doesn't really matter what that number is as long as it's a big random number. Um, okay, so that's good. And we all, the most, well, one of the more important things, well, it says it won't start with those two. So you definitely have to have both of these set, uh, this password secret and root password SHA2. Uh, you have to have those set or it says Greylog won't even start. Um, but the other one is the bind interface because you're most likely, you should definitely probably install this on another machine and you're going to be communicating with Greylog and Librarian MS over IP. So you need to bind this to your network adapter. Um, so we'll find that here, right there. HTTP bind address. And basically this is my IP address of my machine, port 9000. Okay, we'll save that. And then they're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to get uh, systemd working with great log. There we go. Finally. Okay, so we have all of our three services running. We have Gradelog running, we have Elasticsearch, and we have MongoDB. So theoretically now I should be able to go into the web GUI of this. So let's try that. Okay, and this is going to be that root password I set, um, which I made password admin as the default username. Okay, uh, now we're in the uh, gray log web GUI, which is great. Uh, so we can now probably start to focus on getting logs in to gray log uh, from other devices here. So, I mean, there's a ton to do with gray log itself. And I'm, I might make another video just on gray log because you can create some pretty cool dashboards and organize your logs and, and view them in a way that you can't really do that uh, within Librarian MS. So, uh, 
Okay, so we're ready to start sending logs into Graylog, but first we need to set up an input, um, and this is the way you actually get logs into there. Um, so, as I came to find out uh, when I started messing with Graylog, uh, not a lot of people use syslog, um, or at least they don't format their messages in syslog. So what we actually do is we just create a plain text input, so we don't really care what we get in. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about formatting it and extracting all the information we want out of it later. Um, we just want the message in here. Uh, so we usually... A lot of examples you'll see they'll just do plain text because um, you know a lot of these I mean some of these uh, work uh, especially if you have something like Office 365 logs coming in they might be formatted correctly but for a lot of stuff uh, especially networking equipment a lot of the manufacturers didn't follow the rules of syslog so you just do a plain text input um, launch new input and we're just gonna say I like to have my inputs per device types so maybe like all my PF senses will go on one input all my switches will go on one input I mean this is this is uh, however you want to do it kind of thing um, but to me it made more sense to do it this way and, and I'll show you why um, especially when you get into streams why this might make a little bit more sense um, but really we just need the title on here and I'm gonna put this on a port that's um, yeah, this port's fine. Uh, I guess there's certain ports in Ubuntu that are privileged and you can't really use very easily. So, like, I think the default syslog port is 554, but you can't use that. So you need to do something like 55, well, 5555 or 554. I don't know why it put a zero in there for me, but there we go. We'll just do 5554. And all the rest of this is fine. This will listen to any address, so this is good. Okay, save. Okay, so now I have an input in gray log, and it's listening on port 5587, supposedly. I guess I messed that up. I didn't see that. But it doesn't matter. We can use that port instead. So 5587. So now I need to go into my firewall here. And how you send logs into gray logs is going to vary per device. Uh, so you're going to have to look up that device's uh, manual and documentation on how you do that. Uh, for PSNs, uh, you go into the status and system logs, and then you can send it to a remote syslog server. And here, for my remote syslog, is where I'm going to put my IP address in that 5587. Is that what it was? Yeah, 5587. Okay, and we're not going to do everything. We'll just do... General, let me system events, I don't know. Save. Okay. Okay, and if you see up here at the top, you did see, I don't know if you saw that or not, but there was some messages coming in here. And you can also show, show received messages here. Okay, as you see, we're starting to get some messages in from PSSense. PSSense were sending these messages in. Uh, so this is good. Uh, we actually got logs coming in here now. Okay, so now that we got the logs in here, we can probably start integrating Graylog with uh, Librarian MS. So we'll head over to the docs here, and it's actually really, really simple. Um, there's just a couple settings here we need to change. Now, they actually included these settings in the web GUI uh, configuration, so we don't have to actually go into that config.php for this. We can go to global settings, uh, external, Graylog integration. And here's where we're going to put all our IP addresses. So this is my server, the port, 2.1 or newer, uh, admin, this was the password you set, password. Uh, you'll want to set your time zone. Um, and this is uh, these settings can be changed per whatever you want, but usually 10 is fine for this. Um, and device overlog will be zero, that's fine. Okay, we'll save all that. And then we should be able to go to all devices. Let's go to my firewall here. And if you see down here at the bottom, we have gray log messages. Now I had some, uh, I, I, here's the last two we had. Um, I had this working before, that's why there's some other messages in here, but uh, the last two messages showed up. So, okay, so another place you can view gray log messages is under overview and gray log. And over here, you're actually going to see all your gray log messages. Um, and you will even see messages in here that are not uh, from devices that are in uh, Libre NMS. So you might see a source IP you can't click on here, and that's because you don't have that device added. Um, and also, you need to make sure that the source IP address of the message matches what you have in here as the device IP or host name, uh, vice versa. They need to match up. And uh, the docs, they have some ways to preserve that. 
Um, and you might need to look at this if you're using host names uh, to, to adjust this. But if you're using IP address, just make sure that the source IP address of the device, what's sending it, is the same IP address that you have in here, and then they'll match up. But, you know, you can filter on devices and just see those specific uh, devices in here um, and vice versa. So the other thing we wanted to look at real quick are streams. Um, you can actually filter messages based on streams, and that's a that's a pretty cool topic. But I, I'm going to create a basic stream here real quick. Uh, let's go into inputs real quick and do show receive messages. And I need this source up here, this GL2 source input. I need this um, code right here, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to create a new stream. I'm going to say all PFSense messages. Uh, that's fine. Save. Okay, it's the same. And I just lost my... Uh, <laughs> I just lost my thing, so I will go back and get it. When you copy and paste too much. There we go. Streams. Okay, so manage rules. And then we're going to do a new rule here. And then we're going to do GL source. You know, was it GL source input? And then we're going to match exactly that value. So basically, I, when, when all the messages come in, if any of them match this source input, which is that input I created, they're going to put them into this stream here. So I'm done. So this is, uh, I need to start it. So we'll start this. Of course, I don't have any messages in right now, but let me uh, here, I'll log out and log back in. That should create something. There we go. And you see I got a message in from logging in and logging out. Okay, and you might think why you would do this when you just have the inputs over here. So you can do show receive messages, and this is kind of the same thing I'm looking at. Uh, it almost looks exactly the same if you get all the messages over here, but the streams you can actually filter on over here. So now if I refresh this page, you see I have a all PFSense messages stream. So now I can filter on this. And now when you do that, I can see all just my PFSense messages. And you know, you can create these streams however you want. You can just say, uh, if you're looking for like a certain field in the message, maybe just usernames. So I can create a stream that just has to do with authentication. And then I could click here and just see every authentication message on all my devices uh, in one place uh, if I create a stream that does that. So um, I might go into another video uh, on that in the future, maybe a little bit more in depth, maybe with dashboards and, and and uh, some other trip tips and tricks I've learned over the years. But um, this is basically just to get it integrated um, and, and working. Okay, well, that just about does it. Thank you again for watching.